Welcome to Oracles Arising on April 24th. Yeah, so before we, fun. yeah, before we get started, um, I'm going to real fast define what Oracles Arising is. what the group's um, blueprint is. So Oracles Arising is a place for the Ecclesia to come together in unity, to discover how to become a company of oracles and how to legislate and live out that revelation in our individual's roles, being equipped by the spirit of might and revealing our position, releasing unity, justice, and freedom. All right, so Kathy was asking uh, if there is any news based on what uh, last time, last ascension. Um, and I guess we can share what we saw earlier. What do you mean by earlier? Do you mean earlier sessions of Oracle's Rising or something else? Uh, no, earlier today. Oh. Yeah, we have, um, we've started out with a bench of three for oracles arising so mm -hmm. that we can clearly identify the blueprint for the group uh -huh. and to also get any insight um, from the Lord that he wants us to share to start out with testimony Mm -hmm. um, and see if we want, if he wants us to build upon that and possibly go seek more revelation on that All right. particular, um, so you're saying you had a meeting with your bench of three today, earlier today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. It was just Sharon and I, cause Michelle is, is on vacation visiting her children. So, um, Sharon actually was pretty darn cool because Sharon was actually um, getting revelation on her own. And so what I had seen um, was confirmation uh, for her. So Sharon, did you want to share? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. So what we saw um, when we went in to, to prepare for this time together was a ring of fire. It was the, the fire itself formed like a ring shape as though, and it was upright. Kathy, you saw it as upright, right? Because the association you thought of was as though a, yes. what a, a circus lion would jump through. Yeah. Right, right. But it was, I, it was so, bigger oh, than sorry. that. But bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And not a ring on fire, but a ring of fire. And so we, we spent time uh, looking closely at it, absorbing it. I initially felt it was um, up high. I saw it as though up a number of steps. And I wondered, did I need to to climb up those steps myself, but I sensed the Lord lifting me up. So then I stood before it and was able to look quite closely at it. And um, then I remembered the, just a couple of days ago, the Lord had been speaking to me about, about the fire within us. And I'd been recalling what we know of scripture about fire, um, that the Lord is a consuming fire we know. Um, that fire is for refining. And then I was thinking of how Paul said to Timothy, fan the flame within. And so I just have been looking closely at some of those scriptures and the flame within is the gift of God, which is the spirit and a verse we know well, spirit not of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind or self-control. And that's the gift of God that is within that we fan into flames. So Kathy might be able to share more of what she um, 
experienced engaging with the fire, but we both felt that it was that we, we as believers, um, as we submit to that flame and become refined and become spiritual beings, become burning ones, that we, we link up and we form that ring of fire. And Kathy, also, do you want to explain about the how you engage with it, Kathy, and that it seems held together by frequencies? Yeah, so I thought um, the power of the fire that kept it going was the frequency that surrounded it, like kept it in a circle. And I felt that um, it was really showing a picture of unity, that each one of us comes as a piece of that ring of fire to keep the flame burning. Um, and then I also put my hand through it and my hand disappeared like it became a uh, spirit, it became invisible um, to the natural eye. And so that spoke to um, that it's not by flesh, but it's by spirit. Um, and it also, brought revelation that that's what is inside of each of us is that 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 flame but when they talk about the flame we always think of it as like a single burning fire where I saw it more as this ring where we're all connected together to form the ring and that it's with the power of the fire the frequency that keeps it burning so there's a lot of um, unity in that, and that we need each other in unity to keep the fire um, fanning, fanning the fire from within for each of us. And letting the fire burn and refine um, each part of us to yeah, so does anybody else have any um, testimonies that's similar to that? Is this, are we on, a, are we on a, a path that the Lord wants us to continue on? I, when you were talking about the ring of fire uh, closer to the beginning and you talked about it being in a circus, I actually saw a tiger jump through the hoop and land on the other side and lick his paw. And... Um, it went from there to the ringmaster opening the cage door and the, the, the tiger uh, went through the door and I, I, th I think he started to fly. It, it sort of was kind of unclear, but um, sort of ended there. But um, what that means to me is, is there is, there's a, a what, what do they call it? A meme or a mem or whatever, a, a picture with the, yeah. a phrase on it. Um, it's of, of a tiny little cat and the, the the cat is looking in a puddle and in the puddle it sees a tiger and it's just mm -hmm. this tiny little kitten and yeah. uh and so the the phrase is something about believe in yourself right and so the lord has, has really used that image with me um the idea that i really just need to to trust myself to to trust him inside of me and to really let really let <laughs> my phrase is let let the fierce out let my fears out um, there's this, this desire in me to just to really fight the good fight of faith and to do the miraculous and to do the unusual and to do the, the razor edge of faith kind of a thing. And everywhere I go, I, I keep having people tell me that God just doesn't do X, Y, or Z, or you really shouldn't think you're doing this or that because it's not part of their experience. And I get kind of dulled down because, um, either, either I start to wonder myself or, their prayers become witchcraft curses against me and I just completely lose track of the difference between what they're praying onto me and what I think. So that, that image of the tiger is one that I do really appreciate because it's one that I'm really trying hard to, to, to remember, <laughs> to remember that it's well, possible. And maybe when you, when you look at that ring again, yeah. um, see it as, as unity, see it as other mm. people together, because I don't think mm. that we look at the ring that ring is as multiple um, entities, you know, like multiple spirits um, mm. coming together as the, as the Ecclesia yeah, um, that, yeah, that yeah. We're, we're fanning each other's flames. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
<clears throat> maybe also you should kind of discern who you're sharing with because yeah you're putting your pearls before swine and it's not going to help either them or you if you um you know if it discourages you and then they're and they're criticizing it that's not a good thing to criticize these deep things of god yeah so i know we're telling i a lot has changed recently actually um i i used to go to a bible study at a church that i used to go to and god led me to a different church and when i what i was i was expecting to continue to continue going with the home group but when i told them about the the church that i was going to they were very angry with me for for going there or wanting to because they had heard some things that they didn't like about that church and they thought it was in deception and things like this so um pretty much from that moment forward i started to realize that this wasn't the group for me and then they basically told me very soon after that that they didn't want me to come back and it had had some things to do with um just end times that i had shared uh very briefly on but they just for whatever reason it's it's just it's it's hasn't been part of my life now so that was uh fairly recent but okay it's, it's behind me so was well, there yeah. is there any other revelation regarding this um this flame this fire ring or um did anything speak to you with it, Kathy, to see whether or not this is a direction that we want to go with this ascension today so we can stay on track and be done at 7.30? Well, I didn't actually get anything, but I think it sounds awesome because I can sure see that picture of um, all of us being flames of fire in a circle and hold the frequencies. I, I can see that. It just, it, yeah, it rings true with me. It's good. Cool. If we could um, I'll share a little more. Okay. Um, yeah, following on from, um, Kathy, when you said at the time this morning that you saw the, the fire was held together by frequencies, I, the question stirred in me, um, where does that resonate in our, in our body? And what I felt was, um, our belly where I have, the Lord has shown me before that we have the fire burning in our, in our belly. And that's the place from which it can be fanned into flames. And that's our core. I've also heard people describe, you know, the spirit can center in different places in us, but that the spirit, our spirit man centers in our, the core of our being around our navel. And, and from there we, we fan into flames. And so it completely resonates, Robin, actually with what you were saying about, um, about the seeing that you are that lion and becoming that that lion or that tiger um, yeah. where we might feel like a kitten. So absolutely, that's completely what I saw in, when I looked at, in depth at, the, at what Paul said to Timothy in the letter, mm -hmm. fan into flames the gift of God which is in you from the laying on of hands. Yeah. And what he pointed out to Timothy was, you have sincere faith. I know you have sincere faith. That, that sincere faith dwells in you. It comes from your mother. It had come from Timothy's mother and grandmother. He had a sincere faith. And so then Paul says to him, so fan into flames that gift of God, which is in you. And in them of us, we know really well that gift from God, what God has given you is the spirit. And it's a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And so that's, that's everything we're fanning into flames. And I see that totally fits with the lion or lioness image mm, that, yeah. that we become powerful on fire with his love and um, the sound mind or being um, disciplined or self-controlled um, and, and, not, and not being fearful about that, not... Um, not worrying about becoming that powerful person and yeah oh for sure challenge yeah yeah i think it's just another manifestation of being a light being isn't it flame of fire just another man just another way of expressing maybe being mm, yeah. Is yeah. so yeah. um how about yeah. so do you want to um engage that ring of fire sure and then maybe um, just real quick for the people who are, are listening, um, just quickly our encounter guidelines. So let's remember we're all equal priests, so we can all contribute to the facilitation of this group. 
Um, don't be afraid of silence or sharing if you see something different. But let's all try and stay together and honor everyone's contribution. Let's step through Jesus, the door, and enter the veil of life of the Holy of Holies, moving beyond the inner court. Let's engage all the heavenly hosts to assist us. Let's engage the cross where we give over our own issues and choose to die to self. We can do that um, just for like five seconds. Engage the cross where we give over our own issues and choose to die to self. And then let's engage the blood of the lamb. Let's put our body and soul into our spirit and offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, renewing our first love covenant and choosing to open all our gates. We seal off all ungodly portals and dimensions. Let's entangle the seven spirits and wisdoms handmaidens. And so let's, um, yeah, let's choose to engage that, uh, that ring of fire. I feel as a living sacrifice also um, to, to submit under the baptism of fire and the refiner's fire. As John said of Jesus, he will, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You know, his fire refines. I've often seen the river as a fire or have, and have seen the river as, as a river of fire. Um, cleansing and purifying too. Yeah. So oh, awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> when, when you talked about the river of fire, I saw, um, Northern lights. So Jesus is the one that baptizes with fire. And I see him, um, kind of handing to each one of us, um, you know, in the old days they used a, a rag or something on the end of a stick because they didn't have flashlights or lights of any sort. So in the night they used, uh, they stuck some sort of fuel on a rag or even this one particular herb. And, and I see Jesus kind of handing each one of us something like that, firebrand, I guess you could call it. Good. I immediately got touched on the tongue with like a scripture says like coal. <laughs> oh, that's good. That, that was pretty cool. I received that. So Kathy, when he got um, lit those things, did he light them using the ring? Uh, no, they were already lit when I see them. I think, I think because I saw Jesus as the fire, and so he, they were already lit from him, and then he was passing it on to us like as a torch. Okay. I feel like we're dancing around the circle, like like the um, in the Jewish dance, how they they do that dance around in the circle. Actually, um, I've heard that 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 as the men come out of their houses on Friday evening, that they put their arms over each other's shoulders and do that little vine dance all the way to the temple. And so, what they're doing is they're ushering in the presence. God, and I feel like that's what we're doing. We're um, over our shoulders, and we're doing that vine dance around. And what did we do with the torch? Oh, I don't know. It's us. 
I will. Yeah, I see us forming that circle and dancing. Welcome, Quinn. Sharon or uh, Kathy or Robin, you guys want to bring Quinn up to date? Quinn, can you hear us? Not yes, sure. I can. You can hear us? Okay. So we are engaging. Um, um, the girls went in earlier today and they can see uh, as, as a ring of fire. And so we're engaging that ring of fire. And I saw. I saw Yeshua, who is the one who baptizes with fire, give each one of us a, um, like a torch, one of those old fashioned torches. Um, and so we became the fire, we became the torch. And then we uh, began dancing around in a circle, that vine circle that the Jewish people do that ushers in the presence of God. Awesome. Is the ring of fire in a specific place? No. We haven't but, determined any specific place. It, it, there was a circus kind of image, though. Oh, there was? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it, it went from a, a circle of fire to, uh, to a circle of fire in a circus, and there was a tiger that jumped through it and a ringmaster who let the tiger out of the cage and then the, the, the tiger leapt free and it was sort of flying, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And so now we are, we are dancing, we are, where are we now? Yeah, I think we're in, yeah, we're in the dance. We're in this, we're all, we're all fire, brands fire, and we're, in unity, dancing in a circle. That's good. I've been in fire rooms all week, so. <laughs> That's awesome. Just just the door baby. for us. <laughs> Welcome to another fire scene. <laughs> Oh, God, it's so awesome. Mm. The fire ring is kind of, um, it's um, vertical, you know, so it's not like horizontal, it's vertical. And it's the size of like a human being. But we also felt that that fire is within us too, like inside of our tummies. Um, where um, Paul mentioned to Timothy, about um, fanning the flames. And we felt that that, um, that ring of fire is like a ring of frequency that we all bring in unity a piece to create the entire ring. So there's quite a bit of um, symbolism on that, on that, that fire ring as uh, all of us together as fire beings, which we are right now because of the torch that we got from Jesus and we became fire beings, beings. That's wonderful. Yeah. My, my fire experience this week has been just the, just the embracing it, getting familiar, getting used to it. I used to always resist fire, mm. um, even spiritually. Um, as even conceptually and and it's just becoming more and more nope fire stones that's great river of fire great room of fire okay <laughs> <laughs> bring a fire <laughs> bring it on <laughs> well, 
can some can somebody tell me more about the the fire stones i i've heard a little bit but hardly anything and i'm really curious is it okay robin if we save that for later just so that oh, we sure. can stay in the the dancing moment here okay okay Lord, what else would you like us to understand about being your fire and being the ring of fire? What would you like us to do with the ring of fire? Okay. Is it in, is in Zechariah or somewhere where he, where he talks about a, uh, he puts a ring of fire around somebody? I'm not sure, but... Um... I, my heart kind of responded when I think Kathy Davis, somebody said, we're in unity in the fire. And um, I'm, I spent a lot of time in the river and water metaphors, water pictures, being with water, in water, on water. And, um, you know, a drop of water in the ocean, is it's easy to, to see that thing. But I have this sense of this fire, this fire ring and us as aspect, it's that same elemental oneness, right? Um, one body, one entity, one oneness in the fire too. And I think just kind of being with that as unity is a maybe a significant thing. Well, in uh, Zechariah 2.5, um, and I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the, ro the Lord and I will be its glory within. So. What is the it? Uh, well, here's another. Um, then I myself will be a protective wall of fire around Jerusalem, says the Lord, and I will be the glory inside the city. So it's almost like maybe this ring of fire represents part of the new Jerusalem, possibly. Or just around us, you know, like yeah, you know, like his body corporately and individually, hmm. around and in. Welcome, Jen. Hi. I just saw the um, your posting, so I just got on. Okay, no problem. We uh, are currently um, engaging in a ring of fire, which is representing unity and us as part of that fire ring. Um, yeah, so we're looking at the scripture in Zechariah that talks about uh, the fire around the city of Jerusalem and him being in the middle of the glory inside the city. Thank you. Glory in her midst. I'm kind of wondering if um, uh, two things actually. If um, if if it's like a weapon that we could put around somebody that it would protect them or would draw them into unity, um, or if it's just for protection for us. Yeah, I just saw like a. That's funny. I saw like a a hula hoop. <laughs> just um yeah interesting well we know that the fire rep the ring uh represents us yes and that um i'm just trying we got to go back to where we became fire and we're dancing um like the jews possibly Maybe a, the Jerusalem tie there. Well, so let's you're, you're saying looking. that, and my picture is um, dancing, circle dancing as a grapevine, and that creates the wall. That is the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's true. I see that. And I have a that Robin said the tiger jumping through the ring of fire. There's something more with that too. Because that image won't leave me. Um, 
So just <laughs> the unexpected glory, or because this the fire wall of fire around and the glory within, right? Right. The, the tire forth unexpectedly and not entirely tame. <laughs> ah, I I really like that image. The the idea that it isn't that it isn't tame. It reminds me. It reminds me of that that part in Aslan. Do you do you remember the Narnia Chronicles? Anybody? Of course, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the where where Lucy is talking to to Mrs. Beaver, and she she says something about uh, Aslan. He if he's a lion, is he safe? And she says no, but he is good. <laughs> Well, the tiger is um, in contrast to how we see ourselves as kittens, and actually we're way more powerful than that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep looking. As I was looking through scripture for, for um, imagery of fire, this also ties into what you're saying just then that um, God isn't safe, but he's good because the imagery of his fire is that fire refines, but it also consumes. Mm -hmm. And it just all gave me such a sense of awe of him, of his holiness, his, his immense power. And he takes things very seriously. And so um, where you had in Exodus, the fire consuming the sacrifice then you had the fire also consuming to kill the two men that decided to light an unauthorized fire and burn incense um and so that was not <laughs> ordained or approved by the lord and they paid for it so so there's this sense of his great holiness that i couldn't get past when i was looking at this concept of his fire. So maybe it's another level of purity. And that being the protection. Yeah, yeah. And Kathy Davis, I'm looking at your little icon here and I don't know if it's normally I look at it and I think glory, but right now it's it's fire coming out of the megaphone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, Lord, as we speak, are we speaking words of fire? As oracles? I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think I actually heard geese honking in the spirit because I thought for sure they were flying overhead and there's no geese. So, um, yeah, honking geese. So have, have, you heard, have you heard about the, the image of, of the Canada goose? How it's, how it's like a, a watchman that, that, uh, that warns? Mm -hmm. it, in um, Celtic lands, the the wild goose was an image for the Holy Spirit. Mm, sure, yeah. So, yeah. So you never know which way it's going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Yep. So how does that tie in with being oracles? Then? I can see a tie there. Yeah, for sure. The honking in the heavens. Um, it's it's really honestly what it feels like I'm doing right now because I keep trying to warn people about a, a set of trends that I see coming for. Honestly, it's every every person on earth, but because the people that I know are church people, I tend to tend to talk to them about what happens in church. But there is really subtle forms of counterfeit prophecy and counterfeit um, counterfeit authority, sort of like a really extreme version of the Nicolaitan idea where the pastor, through no, through no physical or natural intention of him, um, he just has sort of this added spiritual power that isn't from Jesus for people to really idolize him. And then everybody gets anchored on, you know, the perfect pastor and, and waiting on him to tell them what to do and what is God doing. I'm, I'm simplifying, but like, 
basically there's a set of different things that I see as major issues that I keep trying to tell people and I either I get kicked out of my home group for it or I um, just get ignored by the pastor who I gave a, a very, um, I guess just a, a, a very honest, a, a very honest request for us to talk about something that he did that I felt was very damaging to me uh, a number of years ago and his way of responding was to basically just ignore it and um, I, I think he probably was praying that I would either not come to church or something because I kept getting a lot of um, witchcraft kind of feel from anyway sorry I'm, I'm backtracking or uh, sidetrack yeah, or whatever let's, let's, but what, what I'm what I'm trying to say is is the, the goose the goose honking thing I, I feel like that's where I where I'm at right now and, and that's definitely something that I that I really see is sort of an, a, an image of the in Canada comes to mind because it's the Canadian goose but um, but basically just the the image of the oracle who who sees clearly and then speaks forth um, who actually declares uh, boldly this is what's happening or this is what God is saying regardless of of what is sort of being said by other people or whatever well so. let's let's check in with Holy Spirit to see if um, if that's um, part of the direction um, that were to go with the sure. with the geese because sure. I know we're still we're still um, with the fire um, I just want to keep I just want to try to I, I want to keep us all together and stay on track absolutely of, of, for what, sure. of what Holy Spirit wants to um, share with us yeah so, that's fine yeah, we've had we've had definite revelation regarding formation, you know, where the ecclesia for the 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 flying formation of geese, Absolutely. you know, where yeah. everybody kind of takes a turn being the the leader and then once they get tired then someone else takes the spot and everybody kind of works in unity when it comes to um the formation, you know, of geese. So Yeah. But Let's just keep looking, okay? Sounds good. And hold and hold those important questions as others have said, how do we use this and operate with this as an oracle? So they're good questions and I believe we'll get get to that um, before time's up. Um, thank you, Kathy. I just wanted to actually um, welcome some our seventh person who's joined us today with just a number showing. Do you want to say hi? You can, if your microphone's working, say hi. Or um, we do monitor our typing chat as well if you want to type. I don't know if that's a, a local US number starting with 302 or if it's just perhaps a random number. Looks like hi, a... Hi, Glory. I have a lot of background noise, so I'm going to put it on mute. Okay, Hi, Glory. Glory. Welcome. Sure. Lovely to have Hi. you with us. Thank you. You make up seven, number seven. <laughs> you actually often have seven in yeah. this call. I'm going to change her name here so we know that this is Glory. Okay. I'm loving the imagery we have of dancing around as the ring of fire and and the wall of fire and i have more questions around that how do we as a ring of fire become a wall i see the themes of purity and protection that we've discussed and and then also the glory within and i was really captured by the idea that in a sense we're dancing around the lord's presence his glory is within i wonder how that works But yeah, because Kathy had said that um, the dance brings the um, the presence of the Lord. So I wonder if this is also a pillar, like a pillar of fire, um, even a pillar that we could put somewhere by intention. 
I don't know who spoke of um, when I saw the fire. Um, it reminded me of somebody. Yeah, it talked about the refining fire, and also it the fire remind me of the uh, burning bush where it was burning but it was not consuming. So mm -hmm. the fire has um, life. It's it's not. When it said it's not consuming, it's not burning up. And it's still living. So even though yeah. it's the fire refinery, but it it has life in it. Yeah, because we saw us as the fire. In fact, there was a frequency that kept the ring in formation as a ring because each one of us brought a piece of that fire. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was living. I saw it living as well. Cause, um, we described it and it was living because it was like, um, each one of us as this living fire. And then we got more confirmation when we became the torches that Jesus handed us, um, just about 10 minutes ago. Okay. So that's awesome because that's so right on, Jen. And it isn't consuming. I mean, it's it it's not burning out. <laughs> it's not burning to destroy. Um, uh, just two strands, like it's it's a ring of fire, so it's it's not fully constant, you know, and and. Um, but I do have this kind of picture of like a woven pattern of um, like it's not just a single band. Right. But Actually, did you say two? Because I see three strands um, uh, touring, touring around like the red fire and yellow and orange. Yeah, I think I see t I see two at a time, but as it turns, you see that there's a third, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's cool. Yes. I realized that the burning bush was a place of commissioning. So I don't know if that has anything to do with this too, but we could ask. So is this a is this a place of commissioning by any chance, Lord? Well, I think the picture of us from being looking into the reflection as a kitten and seeing a lion, I think that's a commission of power and authority. Absolutely, for sure. Just to say, welcome, Linda. Linda's joined us. Hello, hey, Linda. Linda. Good to have you. Yeah, there's another aspect of this that just deepening that concept of we're not consumed, but we are refined. And how Kathy explains, she, she put her hand into the fire and her hand became invisible, if I remember right. And I got the sense of, of that, um, you know, our flesh um, being dealt with and, and we becoming completely spirit. And we also had a sense of we... The goal is that we be completely spirit with no parts of us missing that when we link up we need each other and we need to be operating fully with each part of ourselves that's come alive in the spirit and we talked about being uh, light beings spirit or fire beings and i see that this is an imagery for for that commissioning and us also submitting to the process of of being cleansed and untethered so that we are you know operating as spirit beings as we talk about our soul under our spirit and our body under our soul so everything is in right order refined mm -hmm. untethered as needs to be and that makes us these whole spirit beings completely on fire 
able to link link up and and form this wall there's something really strong on that that's good and i'm just glad you clarified yeah that. we're not leaving too. the body out <laughs> right yeah. right alignment and and honoring all parts yeah i i appreciate that, that actually um one of the things that i have been noticing i guess over the last couple of weeks in particular is i i've sort of forgotten about my body in a sense uh you know taking care of spiritual things doing a lot of focusing on the lord uh certainly feeling like i've you know had a generally productive day but one of the things that i've completely forgotten about is just physically taking care of my body in things like just physical activity and such and one of the things that i asked the lord was um I wanted to be a certain weight, which was about 15 pounds less than I was. And so I just said, Lord, if you, if you would like to, to just, you know, make, bring my body into alignment with, with that weight, that's what I want. And seriously, within the last, I don't know, half a week or something, I started to notice my pants were really, really loose. And I thought to myself, wait a second, what's happened here? Cause they used to fit perfectly. So I, I just have to step on the, the scale today and I'm 0.4 of one pound, heavier than what I asked for. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'll take some yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, amen, hey? I need, I need to lose more like 40, so that's okay. Well, anything can happen. Yeah, that's good. And absolutely, we are talking about getting that right alignment and I see, and I love this because I love bringing things together, like what we learn about, you know, cleansing gates, untethering or cleansing the bloodline and so on and getting ourselves in right order. It can seem like so much, but bringing it together with imagery, I really love and seeing that, that there is a way to be this fully alive spiritual being. Um, and the Lord does know how to deal with each and every issue we have. Um, and that includes healing and restoration for the soul and the body and the soul where there's been hurts and wounds and traumas and everything mm -hmm. to restore us to be completely functional spiritual beings. I think Kathy talked about the pillar of fire and that reminded me of the Exodus um, where he um, was standing um, between the Egyptian and the Israelite to be a protection as a pillar of fire. So, um, and also not only just the protection, but he also guide with the pillar of fire. So, um, well, and that would go uh, coincide with the torch that you use as a guide. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's keep looking at the us as fire living spirit beings in unity, connected together to make this wall or this ring. I think we should all um, un together put our hands into the fire like Kathy did earlier and um, connect our body to this. To and it's a ring, remember it's a ring like that mm -hmm. you would jump through. So it's like, there's, a, there's an empty middle there. Um, yeah, I don't want anybody thinking like they're putting their hand into like a campfire kind of picture. Like but we're jumping through. But the presence of God is in the middle. I kind yes. of see this is in the middle, but I think the presence of God is in the middle. So we're putting our, our hands, which represent our body, or the things that we do, uh, our activities, into the presence of God for cleansing. Or for so, Kathy, when you put your hand through um, that, you said it, you, your hand became inv invisible, and then did it turn into light? No, it just, what, what I got was it became spirit versus flesh. Okay. But you, you guys want to, you want to just like all together 
jump through it together? Yeah. Sounds fun. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Sharon? Yeah, sure. I think sure. through and into, I'm kind of torn between going into it, kind of letting myself melt into it versus through it. So what do you think? Is it kind of both? When you put your hand in, do you put your hand in the middle or into the rim? Into the fire, into the center? Oh, I put it into the middle. Kind of like if I were, I was like, um, you know, because I had seen like at first the, the lion jumping through it. And so I was like, well, I'm going to put my hand in it. And that's what I just saw my hand completely disappear. Oh, cool. I see. So... Do you all want to <laughs> jump through it as a as an act of faith? Yeah. Oh, step. I feel like if we're tentative, stepping is fine. Going slow. Yeah, stepping is good. <laughs> some of us might be steppers, and some of us might be jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm probably more of a stepper. <laughs> some of us so, might fly through. What do you think on like the count of three? Yeah. Okay, so are we all standing right there looking at that big old firing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, it. so the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> it was like shot from a cannon. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. And it's different on the other side. Yeah, it really I saw is. That actually. I saw that when we first saw the ring, I saw it different on the other side. I saw it filled with light, like it seemed like it's a city of light. It was brilliant light. That's what I'd seen. Yes, that's why I was saying when you put your hand through it, it do you see your hand turning into light? Yeah, that's good. It feels a little bit like an abandonment, you know, an, another level of becoming abandoned into, into the Lord. That's a great word. I'd had the phrase sub submit to it, but uh, abandon is much more lovely. Well, I also feel a greater sense of trust too rising up. Like, like um, I don't know, even a desire to trust more. Yes, it feels like it's a higher and deeper dimension. Reminds me of the picture I've had of the ocean of his love. But the, the ocean probably wouldn't wrap around me like a soft, warm blanket, but it does that too. <laughs> Well, I didn't go into light. I, I went into darkness, but it was like dark with a light edge to it. And then it's like I'm floating, falling upwards, and there's like bright planets and stuff. Well, that sounds like the dimension, dimension, the higher or deeper dimension. And it's expanding like vast. It's just yeah the expansive
I saw my left hand dipped in wax. I, d I don't know if anybody else has, has ever seen sort of the wax image or, or worked with that, but when I've seen it before, it's often been um, like when I was praying about Washington, uh, just safety for Washington and uh, that the Lord would be uh, more powerful than the Freemasonry statues and things like that. Um, I saw the monuments. I don't remember what it's called, but the Washington Monument, it's like a, a really tall pillar with a, a pyramid at the top. Do you know which one I mean? It's just a very narrow pillar. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's a very well-known oh, monument. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I I saw that covered, just coated in 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 white wax. So I get the feeling that it's it's for protection and for sealing off of 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 unclean things. And was that when you put your hand through the ring, Robin? You know, honestly, it was it was later. Um, Truth is, I'm having a really hard time seeing at the moment. I've been dealing with a lot of land-based issues and just distractions and stuff. Um, I don't, I don't want to get people off track here, but the gist of it is I'm not seeing very much at all. Every once in a while, something creeps through and it's wonderful. Um, yeah. I'm just really having a harder time than I used to. So. That's okay. Do you think there'd be a way we can help you, even if you don't see it? Um, what do others think, I feel like? My heart goes out to you to help you um, be able to come through if you feel you can. Yeah, uh, I felt I felt a strong sense to um, pull everybody together there. Yeah, like not to drift off to um, someplace else. I I felt like um, you know that we might lose gravity, but we gotta um, stick together like that fire ring. I think it's like a. Um, a test you know like when you when you go th you know just where is everybody at to come back together um, right yeah as you said that i kind of got a picture of us strung back into a circle like mm -hmm. holding hands whether good corporeally or otherwise yeah really good i i kind of saw like um uh, you know, when you skydive and you jump out of the plane and then everybody's just kind of floating and, and you're trying to get everybody together to form the ring mm -hmm. as parachuters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, is that helping? I saw it actually. Good, good, good. So let's like kind of, because someone said that they felt like they were going up and someone saw kind of like the universe and then yeah. planets and then someone else um, felt comfy, cozy. I think Kathy felt comfy, cozy, like trust really felt like a high level of trusting, which is really good because it's almost like a, a more intimacy with each other. Um, yeah, sure. So I think I think that's why I felt the strong need to um, come together again and and not drift apart. Mm, yeah, sure. Make sure no one's left behind. Yeah, exactly. That's one of our goals in this group. Absolutely, yeah, that. absolutely. That's that's exactly what I felt when I went in there. It's like everybody's floating away somewhere else. Come back. Mm -hmm. I guess we, we got a sense of its vastness, you know, um, endless places to explore. But if we stay together, see what the Lord will do. Hmm. Yeah, I saw all of us becoming one heart. Oh, I saw like a really big heart. We all became like one heart.
Yeah, that's another reason this message really um, resonated with my spirit today because the Lord has also been making it clear to me that we can't do this journey alone. I'm one of those oh. types who would who would love to stay independent and fix myself and um, not need others, but the Lord's been highlighting to me just how much we do need to do this as teamwork. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I guess for me right now, I'm, I'm struggling with some strongholds that I really need help with. But whenever I go to local people, I feel like I actually get, I, it's sort of complicated. Like, okay, so the, the stuff that's with me acts on them and I can see ways that it acts on them. And so I get worried that I'm affecting them in, an, in a wrong way. And then I decide, I guess I can't go here either. And then I just stop going anywhere <laughs> because it happens everywhere. And I know part of, you know, what I'm dealing with is a, on the deception level, Satan is trying to convince me that I, you know, I'm more harm than I'm good kind of a thing. But seriously, the, this, this, the issues that I'm identified with right now, um, it's everything from land-based, like geographical-based shamanism on the land, which is false seeing in the spirit, to other issues that I won't get into because I don't want to take over the call. But like the gist of it is there's just, there's just a lot of powerful level stuff that I'm really fighting through right now. And I certainly feel the Lord's presence at times, and I certainly have moments of, of revelation, but there is a lot of other stuff. And it's very, um, yeah, it's, it's been... It's it's been discouraging for the last while. I do I do see breakthrough coming though for sure, and some good things that I that I see on the horizon. But yeah, so I guess I, what you said about um, knowing that you don't that we can't do it alone. I I've always found it difficult to find my fit in church, and I can't tell how much of that is because God is just training me in something that's totally new and different than other church people or whether I really do have just a very serious problem with not wanting to be in, in communities because it's not my desire to be separate. But yeah, the lone wolf thing you said really s sticks out for me. Yeah. It can often be a bit of both. Like we, I think most of us here, if not all of us would relate to, to not fitting in in standard Christian circles. So yeah. it's a bit of that. It's hard to find the right people. Um, yeah. And then it's hard to, to trust in community or, yeah, just see how important it is. I'm. I really feel the Lord is highlighting this and and wanting more of us to to link up um, as as groups of of um, three or or more. But that bench of three concept has really been sitting with me as really important. Mm, and, yeah. um, and and even for this level of of our own personal growth, our own journey, just journeying together. Sure. But yeah, but right now I was seeing just the importance of linking in that circle. I see the group here forming that that sure. ring of fire, even linking arms and just a solid sense of linking arms mm -hmm. yeah. as we were with the dancing. And I'm just seeing the the this tender, huge heart that um I see that Kathy mentioned. Um, Lord is really highlighting it's all about love. It's about loving God, loving actually yourself too, because in order to love others, you have to love yourself because you, you love others as yourself. So he's been highlighting about him being love and we are to be love, his love, to extend his love to um, ourselves and others. Totally yeah, agree. That was one good. of the three things. Yeah, heart of love. That was one of the three things Paul said to Timothy. We were looking at scripture. First Timothy three, perhaps. I was looking at that because I was reminded of the concept of fanning into flames what is inside of us, and that was one of the three. What we fan into flames is 
the gift of God, which is the spirit, which is the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and not of fear. So that, that it's just amazing and powerful to think of fanning into flames, of rekindling a fire, that we be fully on fire and fully alive. Right. And our whole spirit being, yep, yeah, like burning with love. Yeah. And power. I'm ADD, so I flip around a lot visually in the spirit, and it can be hard for me to land and actually have an encounter. Um, and I kind of, so I kind of, I've accepted it <laughs> to a degree where I just kind of multi-dimensional out and do stuff. But um, a picture that just keeps coming back to me here as we're, we're spending this time is this, um, the, the ring of fire becoming the wall. And it's, it's, it's quite um, a strong, a strong visual and there, there's just a lot of power to it of, it's like each, person and it's us but it's also the whole body um i i see like person shaped outline uh, of light and it's it's like white yellow and then there's a yellow fading to orange and like a rectangle around each and these are all fitted together and you know like with with paint it's it's blending and merging and it's more like orange red at the edges and then fading into that white uh, human shape in the center and, and fading out and and all form together this living stones idea or or whatever as this this wonderful beautiful strong um wall of flame and um yeah and so that that unity that oneness that interdependence um, as well as the individual set apart one-on-one -on -one intimacy. It's, it's okay for it to be both end. Oh yeah, totally. That's mm. glorious picture. I've been taking notes so I'm jotting bits of that down. Love it. Um, I think this is probably more personal, but I just saw a daddy long leg spider. And what it makes me think of is um, sometimes they talk about witchcraft as like a black widow spider that has this web that kind of sends out tendrils that really captures people and sort of networks them in, in really evil ways. And so it's considered a spider. And every once in a while when when I'm praying, I, I worry, am I getting into witchcraft? Because I just, when, when I pray, I tend to pray. Um, I pray a lot for, for leaders and for people to come into right connections and relationships. And I pray about where I'm going with my destiny scroll and bring the right relationships into me. And just sort of along those lines where I'm, I'm trying to bring the Lord's kingdom in on relationships and i think part of my destiny scroll relates to networking people in a holy way to orchestrate larger picture nehemiah type buildings so um every once in a while i i you know i i get worried about am i doing this in the wrong heart or is this affecting people in the wrong way or whatever and and god showed me a picture of a daddy long leg spider and he's like yeah um <laughs> sorry kiddo but that's you you are a spider yes but you aren't you aren't that powerful you're not as as uh, as I don't know, as you're, you're not a witch, <laughs> sort of the thing. Um, I've had some interesting things spoken about me, but anyway. So yeah, I just saw a daddy long leg spider, and I just thought that was really funny. They're friendlier. Yes, they are. And honestly, really quite harmless. Yeah, hmm. I know. And I I, it's them. sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I read somewhere that. Um, the, the angels refine our fires, that the refine our prayers. I mean, that our prayers, on their way up to the Father's throne for His hearing, they go through a refining process. Oh, good. If that's reassurance for you, that is, yeah. Because He knows your heart, like you. 
he knows what your heart is and that's yeah. what matters yeah and so the prayers that are they get through the refining process well they they are heard and answered thanks yeah i really needed to hear that and i it's reminding me again just of how beautiful it is because this also has that sense of rest the abandonment and rest of um, greater trust in him because we we are abandoned to that that fire of his love and fire of his power and we just let it burn in us we we have a responsibility to do what we need to do to fan it into we also just let and from that our prayers can arise from that place but could i just really quickly get agreement on something you might wait till the end because what we do after we, oh, sure. we feel we've finished the group purpose, we'll switch the recording off and then we can hang around a bit longer. Sounds good. That Let's do that. Like a plan? That's fine, yeah. Cool. So how's everybody feeling? Are we, do we feel like we've gotten the revelation that we were to get tonight? I'm kind of under. Can you hear me? I'm kind of still wondering if there's a purpose that we're not seeing or haven't uh, identified yet for this ring of fire, or that as we can use it to like a weapon, or like we can place it around an event or a location or something. Oh, like, I would love that. I know our release it like. Don't we do that? Yeah. That would be good. I guess my other question would be, can we release it? Um, do we need to release it as a group? Or can we come back to here and release it ourselves? Um, is it something that we can do? Well, who was the one that was talking about, because when I had gotten that hula hoop um, visual, um, was it you, Kathy, that was talking about that we would use the, the ring like to capture, um, bring people into the fire, the ring? That would be, I didn't say that, but that sounds good. Mm. Or we can drop it down. Um, we could drop it down over Washington, D.C.? No. No. <laughs> um, or maybe we, um, well, let's all, let's, let's go to, to Wisdom and ask her. Yeah, that's good. Because we asked her to participate anyway. Um, so wisdom, we come to you to see how we can release this revelation into the um, earth and to the ecclesia, the importance of this unity um, as um, oracles. We want to live out this revelation and we want to release this unity, justice, and freedom that we get from being in this fire, this fire ring. Amen. So how do you want us to go about doing it? So what I just heard was, um, you know what we became when we jumped through the fire ring? Um, we just became that light and that we're that frequency that maybe we'll just come down and um, just release that, that, um, that fire and that, that frequency out from our, from our bellies. So each of us release it in, in our own location, like salt. Or salt, oh, 
So release it wherever we are. Or our realms, if our realms involve stuff that isn't where we physically are. Yeah, yeah. Sharon, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree that's sitting well with me that we, it becomes a part of us. Mm -hmm. And once we've experienced something, it becomes a part of us. And, and then we have it to really start to others. It, it emanates. Right. Us. We yeah. have it to impart to others. And Perfect. And share. Perfect. And I also feel it's an invitation. We offer it as an invitation to others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And to remember this, um, this what we've experienced because experiential knowledge is, is so powerful. Yeah. I, I feel you can only give what you have inside of you. That's the heavenly principle. Um, first it becomes a part of us and then we have it to give to others. Yeah, and I love that what Jen said also, about the love. Yeah. Yeah, Jen said, I noted down, we are to be love. He is love and we are to be love. And there's an invitation into this unity. And what I felt about that invitation into unity also was to strengthen those bonds with each other. Again, yeah. I felt a, a linking arms. Okay. To strengthen, strengthen the bond. Yeah, there's something really on that linking together. Yeah, how they do shoulder upon shoulder. So our shoulders are on each other's shoulders in a, in a circle. So let's just do that really fast. Because Jesus then is in the middle. The glory is in the middle. <laughs> I almost saw like, like we're one, two, three, break. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. like football. They're done. That's funny. I, I just saw a football player with with the the black spot uh, stripes or whatever on on his on his cheeks under his eyes. Yeah, funny. <laughs> team. Yeah, team. team <laughs> oh, you know what? And the funny thing is, I just saw him take off his helmet and spray water on his face, and now he's just hanging out on the bench. So he's he's doing the rest thing. Oh, cool. <laughs> And I do feel like the invitation we have to offer is an invitation to join the circle, but also an invitation to come within into that space of, I feel it's like the city of God, um, that space within in his glory. I feel like we can invite people into that space as well, that protected space within. Mm. Like the new Jerusalem. Yeah, I'm not clear on uh, the different terminologies and what's what, but yes. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. We can invite people in so we can maybe call out to their spirit or even speak to their spirit to come to this place. Yeah. This protected space. Mm -hmm. So we don't leave it actually, we stay here, which is probably a place of his rest then. We stay in the circle and call out to others. So that's the oracle part, because we are it's our words that go forth and draw people in. Yep. Yep, how to legislate and live out that revelation. Also in our individual scrolls. So yeah, it's perfect. Cool.
Cool. Yeah. I feel complete. I'm going to turn the recording off. Does everybody else? I think so, yeah. Yes. Okay.